making things with your hands, it's rewarding, you know, and then seeing the result, feeling it, how is it drying, turning it, all that kind of thing that comes with the Bottargazzi. That's why artesian products are so great. And I will, I will always make it like that. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. He may be renowned as one of Australia's best chefs, but Giovanni Pillu is making a name for himself by producing Bottarga, a key ingredient of his homeland, Sardinia. And the story of how it all started is quite extraordinary. When I learned in hospitality, I was 14, right? And I used to work with my uncle and my auntie. They got no kids, so I was like a son for them for many years. And during the summer season, I used to go and work for them. At the bar that they had were at the port in Olbia, where the ferries used to come in, you know, with, with the tourists from, you know, Civitavecchia or Genova or whatever. And I was work. I used to work there for like three or four months during the school holidays, because in Italy it's three months of school holidays. And I loved it so much. And I used to see these guys, these old retired um, guys in coming to the port and sitting on the, on the wall and fishing for mullet, right? So the mullet doesn't bite. So you put the bait around. They used to make a mix of uh, um, bread, oil, and so this sticky, bready stuff to put it around um, the hooks. So it was a, 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 a many hooks that they used to wrap this stuff around. And then, the, and then you catch the mallet. When, when it starts biting, they felt it. And then they pulled it and they used to grab, you know, like catch it on the gills or on the side because the, the mallet doesn't bite. It's very... Um, um, it, it's not like it's how do you say diffident? Uh, it doesn't trust, you know, like the bait. So they used to, they just eat around it. And this guy so skillfully they used to catch it for extracting in the raw and making botarga. And that's when I first came across this stuff. That my uncle he used to beg these guys to go. If you're making some of the stuff, give me some. And I remember eating it to start with. And you know what I, I <laughs> what it reminded me of. You know when you when you eat Vegemite for the first time and you just go, really? Do I need to eat this stuff? And then slowly you may go, actually, uh, it's a little bit salty. It's not bad. A little bit of butter on it. And then you kind of, you know, get to kind of like it in a way. It's that kind of thing that really reminds me of, you know. And that was, I was so young. So it was quite a pungent um, fish flavor that, you know, as a kid, um, it wasn't easy. It was challenging. But then it became, it turned, it became like Moorish because, you know, the flavor, uh, it's so great. And, you know, and the salt, I mean, salt, like like sugar, you know, you get addicted to stuff like that, right? And this is why now, you know, when I see Botarga, I can eat chunks of it. And some people still struggle with a little bit of you know, Bottarga on the pasta because they're not used to it. But once you get used to that kind of flavor profile, uh, then it becomes, it can become quite addictive. Bottarga is commonplace in Sardinian cuisine and is being used more and more in Australia. But what exactly is it? They call it, it's, the fancy name is, you know, they call it the gold of Sardinia because it's, you know, the color and, you know, like it's so vibrant and the golden color but it is like something very very simple it's basically uh, fish roe um, predominantly from the mullet uh, grey mullet and um, you can have tuna as well which I think you know it's nice but I I really prefer the mullet and uh, it's basically um, preserved in salt um, for only like you know a couple of hours so you don't need to keep it under salt for a long time because that alters the flavor of the botarga it become it can become quite salty because it penetrates too much. So the salt is just to preserve. So we leave it, you know, a few hours uh, rubbed in salt, and then the salt gets um, literally uh, rinsed off on a very gentle jet of water, and then it gets put on trays that they are perforated, so the air flows in this um, temperature control and humidity control fridge to dry for it depends on the size you know um it can take from 10 to uh, 15 days it depends on how big the botarga is that's that's it that's it that's as simple as that (laughs) 
Like Vegemite to Australians, Bataga has a special place in the hearts of Sardinians. Because it's one of those ingredients that define our cuisine. It's a big part of it. It's like porchetta rosto. It's like pecorino cheese. It's like mirto. You know, all it's like bitter honey. All those things that, you know, um, are staples of uh, Sardinia and recognize the region of Sardinia, the island in this case as well, of Sardinia and differentiates from the rest of Italy. Um, that's it. Bottarga is one of them. And I know that there is, but you know, Bottarga gets made in Sicily, gets made in the south of Italy, like other other cultures make Bottarga, you know, when the Greeks make it, and you know, um, I know in Japan gets made. But I think the Sardinian one, uh, it's, it's got to be like anything, you know, the environment, um, the, the, you know, the, the, the salt, all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, it has been a part of our, you know, diet, not, not the, all of the island, because, you know, being an island, and we talked about this in the past, Anthony, that, you know, Sardinia is so different in what they cook and how they live and the dialect and all that. And, and Botarga, it's one of those things that, you know, some people in Sardinia don't know much about Botarga because they haven't grown up with it or it's in a different area or whatever. But it's, it's, it's such an ingredient that now, you know, people associate and they go, Botarga, ah, Sardinia, or vice versa. You know, that's what, like, it's important. It's crucial. After a trip to Sardinia, a chance meeting opened the door to a whole new food adventure for Giovanni. Um, <laughs> it's a great story. I love this story because I was so pumped up about the Sardinian Botarga, right? I always believed, you know, and I still, I still believe it, you know, not, not that I... Uh, the, 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 the product from Sardinia was the best in the world, you know, and it probably still is. Um, and, you know, one day um, we were traveling around Sardinia with the, one of the tours that I do, one of the cooking tours, and we ended up uh, visiting the biggest fish market in Sardinia, which is in Cagliari, which is the, the biggest town in Sardinia um, in the south. And they are very close to Africa and that is I reckon where the Botarga may came from initially where you know the Arabs used to uh, salt to preserve things I'm thinking you know the, 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 the story behind it so I thought you know here we are San Benedetto markets you know the best fish market in the island so I'm showing off to all the Australians the Botarga it's all over all on the benches because it's a big thing for them you know and um and i and i you know i pumped everyone up going you know this is sardinian and look how good this is we're gonna buy some and cook with it you know i want to I introduce you to botarga because you know a lot of people don't even know what it is um and this guy from uh, you know one one of the bench one behind one of the benches goes oh you know i picked up the accent in English, the English accent, and he goes, "Oh, Australiani, Australians," and I said, "Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, but these guys are. You know, we're doing a tour. Oh, I love your Botarga, like, you know, how much is it? And you know, obviously, and he goes, "Yeah, you know, like, oh, you know, it's great. I love Australia, though. You know, I know that." I said, "Oh, you know," and and he goes, "I, I go like every year to Australia." I said, "Oh, really? Every year? Wow, you know." I said, "That's a bit of a trip, you know. What do you do there? Like holidays? Or what? What do you love?" He goes, oh, no, I just go in um, to Queensland to buy fish roe. <laughs> I said, what? What do you mean? And all the Aussies are going, hang on a second. Is this Australian stuff or Sardinian stuff? And um, I said, oh, tell us about this because I got no idea. What are you talking about? Like, isn't this so Sardinian Botanga? Like, he goes, listen, his name is Stefano, and I still speak to him occasionally. He goes, look, if anyone that produces Botanga in Sardinia tells you that the raw that we catch in the island, it's enough to supply all the producers and then, you know, the export market and the, and the local demand in summer, which is crazy. You know, Sardinia quadruples in volume of people in summer. It's bullshit, he said. There's no way that we will ever catch enough. We don't have enough. So we have to buy Roy from elsewhere. And we believe that after the Sardinian one, the Australian is the best one around. So that's what I've done then, you know. He put me in touch with um, um, these guys in Queensland, in uh, near Byron Bay, um, Rockwell Fishery. And these guys um, have fishermen 
like they the, they the processors. So they are fishermen. They catch the mallet, and then it gets you know taken to the to the facility where these guys are, and then they process the um, you know the the the, the roe. So basically, they extract the, the the eggs from you know the belly of the fish, and the mile goes. Uh, somewhere else, they gets packed and sold to you know the Middle East or the, the the Arabs love it, and they send you know they send it over there. But the female obviously get graded, and then they get graded in uh, size and color, and then you know um, that's what I did. I approached these guys, same guys, and I said, guys, I want to make my own batarga. Can you supply me? And this is like seven or eight years ago when I, when I started this because I thought, what is the point? I'm buying sardine and batarga for the restaurants, but it's not. It's Australian, so I make my own, right? And then the other thing that you need when you make botarga is the most important ingredient, apart from the raw, is the only ingredient is the salt, right? Because that can change a little bit of flavor. So because salt, it's not just for salting, it's also for flavoring things. And I thought, well, where is the best salt and where can I get it from? I, I uh, contacted Alex from Olsen and I said, Alex, this is what I want to do. And it's salt that can, it's a little bit, it needs to be a little bit moist because it needs to stick, right? And I need it to be quite fine and minerally and salty like the Sardinian one. Can we, can we do something like that? And she goes, yes, of course we can. So she made some samples. We went through it. We just worked on it. And now I have what she calls the Botarga salt. You know, I get bags from her that I can salt my Botarga because is such an important ingredient. And that's it. And then, you know, you just got to, you know, um, make sure that you dry it in the right way, the consistency. It can be a little bit drier, a little bit fresher, depending what you do with it. But, you know, it, it kind of, it was a little bit easier, I guess, to me because, you know, being a chef by trade and, and, and cooked with that, I knew what I wanted, you know. So, you know, I just had to get it, you know, uh, the way that I used it to cook with. And, and not only cook, but also, you know, just like eat it with, you know, with a salad or shaved on something or, you know. Um, so it was a little bit easier for me to get to the, um, to get to the point. Obviously, you got to learn the different environment where you make it, you know, the refrigeration and all that kind of stuff. But that's, that's mechanical stuff. You can get that, you know, like right pretty quickly, you know. Um, and the, and, the, and that's the next step for us will be, taking the bigger step, you know, that start starting to do volume because now it's really ramping up. And, um, you know, when, when we, when we, um, it, when we go into the new facility, I think things obviously have to be changed, but we're ready for it. You know, I have guys that I'm working with and I have a few Sardinians that they love the product like I do. And we, uh, we all understand it quite well. So I'm sure that we can get there right pretty quickly. The gray mullet is caught in Southern Queensland. And the sustainable method of harvest is quite extraordinary. Oh, man, mind-blowing stuff. Um, I did that with um, Maeve Amera when she did uh, one of the episodes, um, Safari Water. And uh, she said, you know, I want to do a story on Botarga, but we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to go fishing, and then we're going to go to the facility and take the mallet out. And we filmed that. They uh, put the raw out from the mallet, and then we're going to go home and cook with it. I said, oh man, brilliant, that's great. Because, you know, I really want more and more people to learn about it. So we, uh, off we go to um, uh, Queensland, uh, these guys that they catch the mullet. I never seen the happening in, in, in Australia, how they did it. Because in Sardinia it's different. But here, so basically we went to a place called, um, so uh, 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 it's called Kira Beach, right? Up, up north. Uh, in the Gold Coast. And basically, there is the river mouth. So the river comes out, you know, it spills into the sea. And there is a guy that sits at the top of the uh, cliff and it's, he's the spotter, right? So when, and then there is guys waiting on the beach where this mullet is going to come out from the, from the river and turn and start swimming into the sea to uh, spawn. And this guy then, you know, uh, radios, the guys on the beach, M mind you, these guys are, you know, chain smokers, drinkers, <laughs> you know, waiting for this mullet to come out. And in the meantime, that's what they're doing. You know, they got these special little boats with nets ready for it because when they come out, you know, when the mullet comes out, they get um, a warning, say, yep. Yeah. And then they see this, you see this black, um, you know, patch 
swimming across and these guys quickly jump on this almost like hand homemade uh, jet skis with nets and they got to round the mallet up as much as they can they'll lose a lot of and this is why mallet is so sustainable because they can't catch all of it right so they round up as much as they can but almost a half of it stays in the water and they just keep that's why there is so much of it right and um, then they, they they tie the two nets together and then hook it up to the front of the foil drive on the beach and then drag the mallet up on the beach to reverse the four-wheel drive. It's crazy. These guys are... One day, one of those guys lost one end of the net and he had to literally dive in and swim through waves. This is like an open beach, right? So there is waves, there is surf. With his T-shirt on, chain smoker, drink, I'm going, this guy will die. He will never come out of this. And then eventually, you know, he gets the end of the net, they pull it in and he comes out. He was, you know, quite exhausted. And I said to him, man, that was insane. Like, are you all right? You know, and he goes, yeah, no worries. And then he lights a cigarette and then off he goes again. Said, mate, we do this every day. It's fine. It's like incredible. So then the fish gets um, graded into crates. It, it all happens very quickly because the trick is to get it as fast as they can to the facility to extract the roe. The fresher, the quicker, the better, right? And then, um, you know, it gets graded in um, males and females and then size because obviously the roe is bigger, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then... Um, yeah, and then it gets taken to um, you know the fishery, and then from there they process it, and they are amazing at what they do. Even they are like they, they, you know the, the facility is very sleek, uh, very well organized. You know, um, um, you know extracting the raw grading for color, for size, um, packing, all that kind of stuff gets done. You know, but beautifully, yeah. Otago is very versatile, and as Giovanni explains, keeping things simple lets it shine. The, the first one has got to be, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a cliche, like spaghetti alla bottaglia, right? So this is for me, probably, you know, and I wouldn't call it the best way because it's subjective, you know, subject to, um, you know, people likings, and, you know, I can't say, it's hard to say always, you know, oh, this is you know, the best way. This is, I'll say this is my favorite way. It's spaghetti with botarga, which is so simple because botarga can be covered with many things. Otherwise, you lose the flavor profile and, you know, the beautiful, um, you know, texture that is got and all that. But just having, you know, spaghetti with olive oil in a pan, um, as simple as maybe a little bit of garlic and chili and grated botarga mixed through it, and using, you know, some of the beautiful cooking water and, and emulsifying this, you know, um, beautiful product, sprinkling it through it and maybe finishing it off with a little bit of parsley. That's as simple as that. You know, like canaglie olio with botarga. That is my favorite dish. I love that with a good quality pasta, which, you know, it's so, so important. Um, and then the other way that I love eating it is it's it's um shaved because i love the texture of the shade stuff it's a little bit marshmallowy um it's a little bit sticky it's like but it's so moorish it's crazy it's like you know something that you want to keep eating you know and again that's me right saying you know this is how i love it uh shaved on um um uh, buffalo mozzarella i like it with crunchy bits and a crunchy i'm thinking about shaved fennel, uh, celery, you know, those crunchy raw um, vegetables that you can have, you know, maybe in summer, right? And they, and they, you know, they, they, obviously when you have something crunchy, you know, it's texture and then it becomes flavor and all the rest of it. But, you know, just a simple salad with buffalo mozzarella, um, fennel and um, celery, lots of olive oil, um, and then shaved botarga on top of it with crusty bread. Man, I love that. Absolutely love it. <laughs> I think that's what I'm having for lunch maybe now. <laughs> I'm inspired. Sardinians are proud of their Botaga. But what do they think of what Giovanni is making in Australia? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely. I, I took it back a number of times. 
um, because we have, we have nice packaging and all that. So I took it back to get feedback as well. You know, um, I'm not like hiding that. You know, I'm still learning about making it and then what I'm doing with my target. There's a lot of people that I still talk to and um, I can call as well. So I took it back and they love it. Absolutely love it, you know. And then, you know, I don't know if sometimes I, you got to measure like what people say. Yeah? And, I'm, and I'm aware of that, you know, when people say, oh, this is better than the sardine and stuff. Hang on a second. That let's, let's don't, you know, go crazy and go... Look, I take it, but I know that, you know, there is, it's probably could be different, but even within Sardinia, there is different f- flavor profiles of Botarga. But I got really great feedback. And especially, you know, what strikes me about what we make here is the color. Because you see Botargas around, and they are quite dark. And always, now the guys at the fishery, uh, Robin, always say to me, Giovanni, we grade the Botarga also on color because it's a visual product right so when something looks amazing like you know like the raw it looks golden and vibrant it's what the grading is like there is a double a and then you start going b and c grade and all the rest of it um you know i think that's what and i've got amazing feedback i think we're doing a good product and and the sardinians love it yeah I took some back when I went back um, a few, um, few weeks back, and uh, you know they, they, you know, one of my cousins, Johnny, said, "Man, I love this stuff." With the success of the brand, expansion plans are imminent. Right now, it's in the best place because we're making it now fully. Um, in the past, you know, I did it with uh, we co-made it with a couple of other guys, including Con and 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 and. Um, you know, a uh, guy up north, but now we, 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 um, we're doing it ourselves. Um, it's still a very small production. Um, we set up, you know, at Aqua Fresca, which is our, you know, the other restaurant that we have. And it's a really good setup, actually, because, you know, the, the, uh, the environment is right, you know, the temperature, we got the, the right cool room, and now we got the right fridge, but it's still very small. Um, and it's going good because, you know, since we came back from, the break that we call it, you know, they, they, they obviously they nearly three years of almost not making Botarga because there was an availability of uh, raw because they stopped fishing and all that kind of stuff. Um, now we started again and it's really brilliant. I'm really loving now that, you know, we are fully um, in control of it, which is great. So now at the moment, as well as us from the restaurant, you can send us an email and we can send it to anywhere, post it. But also I have two providers, essential ingredients and clam seafood in Melbourne. They, they're distributing it for us, right? The great suppliers and um, we, we're not coping, right? We're not keeping up. So I need to stagger what I'm making because, you know, I've got only a small fridge. But what I want to do next year is now, so we're looking at this facility and like I said, you know, we're nearly there, fingers crossed. And... Um, you know, it's going to be obviously bigger and better um, because, you know, the refrigeration is going to be a little bit more high tech. The equipment inside and um, the packing and the speed that we can do things and, and the volume, that is always changing. Nothing else will change. I'm not changing the way that I'm making it to make it, you know, I, I can't make it any better. I think we've got a great product now and we'll make a great product later because, like I said, we're just still going to make it by hand. All is doing is next year is increasing volume and, and meeting demand because at the moment, you know, we can do what we can. So we can't, you know, we can't even push it. And my idea will be then to start getting to the next step of try to really teach Australians how to appreciate and eat Botarga. So I want to start doing markets. I want to start joining with, you know, Olson and go and do, you know, uh, produce um, markets uh, with vanilla cheese and eating it, you know, with their product, uh, Pepe Saya. I want to to tap into those guys and, and, you know, we can promote the Botarga together with other great products that they made in Australia. That is what I want to do. Like, I really want to take it to the next step. And my dream will be to, you know, export some of it because it's such a great product, like, you know, Australian truffles. Um, and then, you know, I think it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be amazing. And then, you know, in, in, the, in the bottom of the drawer, there is a small, tiny dream that I want to maybe sell it back to Sardinia. 
<laughs> that is what you know. That would be amazing. That would that would that would be great. But yeah, we'll see. Even with expansion, Giovanni is an artisan producer at heart, and the methods and techniques will never change. Oh, I love making things with my hands. You know, I think as a chef. Chefs love using their hands. I mean, it's an artesian product, and this is what I love about Botarga. Even if next year we go into a bigger facility, it will still be handmade. I'm not going into a place to make more Botarga because I want to make more. I want to sell more. I really want people to appreciate it the way they were appreciated in Sardinia in Australia, right? I'm never going to go and mechanize making botarga and you can do some things you can mechanize some stuff right because some people do it for me what i love is just getting my hands like you know every tuesday i go to a fresca and i get the salt out i put my gloves on and then that is what i love rubbing the salt into it making things with your hands it's rewarding you know and then seeing the result feeling it how is it drying turning it all the kind of thing that come with the botarga See, that's why artesian products are so great and i will i will always make it like that even if we make triple the volume I, we will always be making it by hand because it's so important you got to feel it you got to feel it almost like pizza dough you got to feel the dough man you can't the recipe is there but then you got to feel it as well it's never the same you know oh man brings back memories <laughs> lots of memories you know food it's like music you know when you eat it you just go oh I remember when I was 15 you know and I, you know all those things that I remember learning about it and, and all that you know and, and it obviously brings back you know to my, brings me back to my roots and I think that's the most the most beautiful thing you know and and food does that to you, you know. It brings back memories, and um, and I can't eat enough of it, man. I, I love it, absolutely love it. We have it on the restaurant, you know, at least two or three recipes, and I just go to my staff. But you know, but, but chef, we got botarga somewhere else, guys. It's botarga we're talking about. It's not unusual in a menu that does Sardinian to have botarga in three different dishes. So don't be. It's okay. Relax. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. He may be a renowned chef passionate about his food and heritage, but Botaga has allowed Giovanni to share Sardinian food to a wider audience. This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.